I'm Joanne Doneen, and uh, I'm from the West Coast originally. Uh, I've been in Philadelphia since uh, 1987, and uh, I'm very happy here. I went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, and uh, yeah, I've always been interested in painting, and so I was drawn to uh, continue that education. And I investigated. Uh, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and also the Art Students League in New York. So, so uh, I heard about the, the gallery, Muse Gallery, years ago, uh, knowing it was a, a well established cooperative gallery. And uh, I joined just about a year ago. Uh, I live an hour and a half away from Philadelphia, so it's a little uh, ride in to come to the gallery. Um, <clears throat> And because it's a cooperative, we each find our, our place, I think, in terms of how we can uh, support the gallery, what kinds of tasks we can do individually. And for me, uh, right now, I'm just working with the documentation that, the, that is important for a gallery, uh, membership, um, all of those issues. Uh, things become outdated and you have to like redo them and uh, start over, so I'm doing that. And I have found this gallery to be so, uh, there's a lot of com camaraderie as well as support for your shows and it's a, it's a, it's a fine, fine group of people, very, very supportive. Yeah. Well, I think I've always been interested in art actually, but I, uh, I'm always drawing, I would say. Uh, I come from a small town and uh, there was no museums, um, not very many people interested in art. Uh, there were no art classes in uh, grade school or high school. Um, so, uh, so I didn't have a way really to go further, but I was always interested in working with my hands and uh, uh, saying something about the world that I was seeing. So that was a young age, like I would say five, uh, fifth, fifth grade, something like that. I know I was very interested in writing was my first uh, expression. Um, and then slowly I moved to the visual arts. Yeah. I don't have a goal in mind. Uh, and in fact, I find having a goal in mind to be something of a hindrance. Uh, I tried, you know, having a, a clear idea. Uh, but I think the intuitive aspect of art is where the creative aspect is too. So it's not something that you can, um, for me as an artist, it's not something that I can really uh, give into as having a plan or a project. I don't know how a piece will look when I start. Uh, I can I, I can start out with like a color theme kind of or uh, a general mood or an inspiration from something that I've seen, but uh, I don't hold myself to that. As the work progresses, it starts to tell me actually, uh, you know, I, I begin, it's more like a finding actually, uh, an unearthing sometimes uh, because I, in mixed media, I put on a lot of different materials and then kind of find my way through them. Uh, so, uh, you know, a goal, a goal would be um, not helpful, I think, for my work. Well, it was a very interesting today with a lot of people coming in uh, and, and really talking about the work and expressing what they noticed or, you know, how they felt. And uh, I realized uh, that, that I think the predominant thing actually is that it arouses interest. You know, there's, there's uh, something that kind of pulls you into the work a little bit, that makes you a little thoughtful or uh, a little bit of wonder about the work. Um, yeah, I think it's that. You know, it's like. Uh, what, what is being said here, or what, you know, what is this about? Um, I also like, uh, particularly with this body of work, uh, a strong intention was to have each piece read as a whole. Um, that there would be a 
harmony throughout the piece uh, and a layering, a layering into space a little bit, I think, also. But um, that's connected to the title, really, this very place, that uh, there's a quality to wherever we are. And, and if we attend to that, like with more mindfulness, uh, it, it kind of leads you. It leads you along, and and you find the richness in that. And uh, and that paintings, because you're working with the inner world and the outer world at the same time, that can happen very spontaneously. And uh, I think that's one of the exciting things about painting is uh, uh, finding the expression of a place. It can be in a detail, or it can be in a mood, or it can be in a dominant color, or it can be in a quality of a memory, all those kinds of things. And uh, yeah, and it's exciting when you, when you get that and, and want to go with that. Well, I was trained uh, traditionally. When I first started painting, um, I was taken by an artist uh, Kate Kalowitz, uh, social realism, working with the figure. Uh, and I was trained, my teacher, Herman Keyes, who uh, just is the person that really swung open the doors to art for me and made it possible for me to continue. Um, he had me uh, actually uh, copy that work of Kate Kalowitz, learn her, uh, her strength and style. Uh, and then at the academy, which is very traditional, I worked for hours in front of a figure. And, uh, you know, it was rigorous. Uh, you had to learn how to draw and you had to learn how to uh, get your proportions right and get the anatomy right. And I love that. I really did. I have no regrets about that. But when I began painting on my own, when I was left in the studio by myself, and which was the last two years of being in the academy, you're there with a studio and you're training and you're to make a body of work, which is a big step. I mean, it's, it's quite a big deal. Uh, it's, but it's also freeing. It's like, okay, you know, here I am. Uh, but very quickly and very naturally, I became abstract. I, and I just understood that to be the case. Though I still love drawing what I see and drawing from the figure, uh, when I want to speak about the world, it really shows up as abstract work. So, um, where I am now, actually, uh, having seen this show, having seen what I'm up to now, um, you know, you get inspiration for what to do next, and I can see myself going back to maybe more texture less imagery and more um, uh, objectness in the sense that uh, in the sense that the whole piece uh, isn't about an image of a place but more an actual object in space almost sculptural a little bit um, we'll see but uh, it's, it's interesting you know I, I didn't realize how much an artist could change when I started out drawing, I thought that would be what I do, do. and it's, uh, it opens lots of doors. There would be lots of devices, but uh, I, I think two main ones really is not to be afraid to find a mentor or someone that, that whose art inspires you, and to uh, to build a relationship with someone uh, that that is speaking in a, in a way that you would admire. I think that is, um, because, there's, because there's, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. And, um, and you don't need to learn it all by yourself. I mean, there's people that have traveled that road before. So I would say that, and, and also the inspiration that comes from um, the artist community. Very, very important. Um, the other thing is, I think, I think
think it's most important to learn how to see, how to, uh, how to look at your world with a, what I call as a humble eye. It's like being at the being at the world, having a tool in your hand, and uh, and and waiting till the world is kind of speaking to you, and not being afraid to follow that, with no idea of like your painting or your drawing or your, you know you're gonna have a finished product there, but just to let all that go and just just learn to see how you see. Because how you see is so can be very different, it is different than how other people are seeing. And to find that out is, 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 is uh, I think, important. And I think having too much product, you know, you've, you've got to have a drawing, you've got to have a painting, you've got to have a finished product. I think that really can stifle that, uh, that seeing that is where the richness is. Yeah. So this piece, uh, <clears throat> it was interesting, there were, People came into the gallery today, and there seemed to be a lot of conversation about this particular piece. And I think it shows uh, it shows both the layering uh, that I like, uh, but also and the unified the unified sense, like the predominant image, really fills this piece. Um, and that was, that was very pleasing to me. The layering of the warm against that cool in the, in the background was important. But here, the texture actually, if you were to put your hand on it, you would feel the texture in this piece. So that quality of texture and intimacy that it can be involved in a piece um, is, is very, very satisfying for me. Um, Again, I think I mentioned that I like a piece to make a, make a statement from a distance uh, and be clear about that statement, the harmony, the strength of the piece as a whole. But then when you come up and you're very close to the piece, you begin to see the nuance and the texture, both the implied texture and the actual texture of the piece. Um, the color is important. Uh, but those other qualities, I think, um, are predominant, particularly, this is almost monochromatic in a certain way. There's a little bit of lavender there that you can see, and there's a little bit of blue, but just very lightly, the gold and the, and the warm colors are really predominating. But when I look at this piece and I see the, uh, when I see the, how the background supports it, um, that, that unifying aspect um, is you know, pleasing. And, uh, uh, and not all the pieces have that much texture. Um, but this one does. Yeah.